All of us are like this. All of us. As a group, we get like this. We do something and we do it a certain way and we get stuck and that's the way we do it. And if you try to change it, who? <laughs> you may have to die. Or get fired. But if you try to change it, you're not going to be liked. You're not going to get Christmas cards. Right? Because we always send out Christmas cards. No. We tend to fall into the same trap when we talk about religion and spiritual things. And religion is basically doing something the same way over and over again because you do it religiously, right? This is what you do. And sometimes we can drop God completely out of that equation. We can just forget about Jesus and we do what we do. And we do it on these times of the year and this is how we do it and this is what we do. Can you imagine? The love that you have for Jesus makes it hard for you to imagine. Someone willing to kill Him in order not to change. Do you remember at the very beginning of this book when we, read, when we met Nicodemus? Remember Nicodemus? Right? Came to him at night. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. Right? And he came and said, you know, no one could do the miraculous signs you're doing unless God was with him. And then Jesus said, you know, Nicodemus, you need to start all over. If you want to know anything about God, you need to start all. You need to be born again. You need to just go back to the beginning and let God teach you. That's what he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus says, how could that be? I mean, we're your people. We're following your law. We're, we're, we're keeping your, we're building your temple. We're doing all these things. And then God came to visit them and they were willing to kill them in order not to change. Do you see why John put this in the book? But what about personally? Forget the corporate thing. What about personally? Do you ever do this personally? Is there anything in your life that God is encroaching on? Something that you really don't want to change? And folks, I don't know what that is for you. You don't know what that is for me. But your own conscience does. You know what you struggle with. You know if it's, if it's gossip. You know if it's being judgmental. You know if it's some sexual sin. You know if it's lying. But you know what it is. And already as I'm listing them, you've got your guard up and I've got my guard up and it says, no, no, we're not going near that one. No, we're not going to change that. No, you're not going to take me away. You're not going to come and take away my lifestyle and what I like. You're not going to do it. Matter of fact, you can die. At some point, we confess that Jesus was Lord. God is God, and we're not. Jesus is Lord. He is fit to control our lives. He is the one that can control us. He's the one that says, this is good for you. This is for your well-being. But maybe there's some part that you haven't let go of. Maybe there's some part of your life that you're saying he can be Lord of the rest of it, but not this. And before you're going to change that, before you're even going to face that, before you're even going to look at the idea of changing, it'd be better off he just wouldn't die. Well, he did die. He did. He gave his life up willingly for that part of your life that you have trouble letting go. He gave up His life because you desperately needed it. We celebrate that every week. Every week we get together and we celebrate the sacrifice Jesus made and He did it willfully. He did it on His own so that so that someday your heart would be soft enough 
that you could feel secure enough in His love, that you could feel enough trust to say, I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to turn this over to Jesus. I'm going to quit being precious. I'm going to, I, I'm going to quit being judgmental. I'm going, to, I'm going to quit talking about people behind their back. I, I, I'm going to change me. I'm going to let Jesus be Lord of that area of my life. How many miracles does he have to do? He just raised a man from the dead. Healed a man who was blind from birth. Caused a man to walk and paralyzed. He is qualified to be your Lord and your Savior. And we get together to encourage each other to submit all of our lives, every last part of it, to Jesus' Lordship and say, you know better than I do. And yes, it doesn't come natural for me to be like you, but I want to be like you instead of you being like me. And that's why we take a little supper. And that's why we meet. And that's why we face these things that they come up in our life and we turn them over to Jesus and say, well, I am so thankful you've been so patient with me. I'm so thankful that you're willing to forgive me when I was so blind for so long. And I'm so thankful to me life. Prepare us for the Lord's Supper. We're going to sing number 425, verses 1 and 2. And we're going to think about the sacrifice that Jesus made. And we're going to think about the parts of our lives that we're willing to turn over or not turn over to Him. <laughs>